as Ukraine blames ammunition shortages for recent territorial losses. The Republican-led U.S. House of Representatives has failed to throw key the lifeline, refusing to bring a vote on a Senate-passed emergency spending bill with $60 billion to support Ukraine. Nobody agrees with what's Putin, what Putin's done, but when we're taking our hard-earned tax dollars and sending them 5,000 miles away without any end in sight, meanwhile, our border's wide open and our American citizens are being murdered on their streets, that's a problem. But most of the funds lawmakers have approved to arm Ukraine aren't going directly there. They're being spent here in the United States, in plants like this York, Pennsylvania plant in the congressman's district to build new weapons and to replace the old weapons sent to Kyiv from U.S. stockpiles. The York plant is one of dozens of defense industrial facilities injected with congressional funds in support of Ukraine's fight. And those facilities range from you know, private factories to government laboratories to ammunition plants that are you know, World War I or World War II era that are desperately in need of uh, modernization. VOA gained rare access to the Scranton Army Ammunition Plant, about three hours north of York, to see firsthand how those tax dollars are spent. Here, steel rods are molded in the fiery Scranton furnaces forged into 155-millimeter artillery round shells. The shells are cooled, inspected, and painted to prevent rusting before they're shipped off to be packed with explosives. Northeast Pennsylvania production has doubled from 14,000 155-millimeter shells per month at the start of the Ukraine war to 28,000 per month today. And plant contractor General Dynamics says that number will jump to 36,000 per month when a new production line in a nearby plant goes live in a few weeks. This is one complete production line infrastructure that you're looking at. Rich Hansen, who oversees the plan for the Army, says $418 million in taxpayer dollars is funding 20 modernization projects here. The employee levels, certainly it has increased. Um, and, and I believe that GD said that it will continue to increase to match the production uh, lines that we install. 200 more new jobs at this plant alone. But a General Dynamics official tells VOA those jobs won't come without increased funding from Congress. And Congressman Matt Cartwright says those jobs will make a difference in places like Scranton. It's a big shot in the arm. I mean, uh, Scranton, northeastern Pennsylvania, has kind of been bumping along economically. But while the jobs are important, what's more important, he says, is making sure the U.S. doesn't turn its back on Ukraine. Not only is it un-American, I'm here to tell you it's un-Pennsylvanian, okay? We have always stood up for democracy and freedom wherever it exists. And I don't think we should change that policy now. The Army says it needs to produce 100,000 155-millimeter rounds per month starting in 2025 to replenish the more than 2 million rounds the U.S. has sent to Ukraine and to keep giving Kiev enough rounds to defend itself. The U.S. defense industry won't reach that goal, defense officials say, without supplemental funding from Congress. Carla Babb, VOA News, Scranton, Pennsylvania.